this beautiful Lord's Day Sunday morning. This is your radio pastor, Lee Allen Spite Sr., bringing to you another in a series of radio ministries, The Hour of Power. Draw near to your radio and let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, I give you glory and I give you praise and I thank you now for waking me this morning. I thank you for allowing me to come uh, by the media of radio and to the homes of those who are sick upon hospital beds, dear God, behind prison bars, even to those who are riding along in their cars. I pray that you would move by your power and the anointing. Whatever the request of your children are, I pray that you would answer that request according to your rich word and your promises. And God will give you glory and will give you praise and will magnify you. We will thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Let me take this opportunity to invite you to worship the Lord with us at Holy Temple 572 Clinton Street, uh, downtown Buffalo, New York. A church where Jesus is real and a church that cares. A church where everyone is someone and you are invited to all of our services Sunday morning 11 o'clock Tuesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock and on Friday night at 7 p.m. we have Bible study by the way of going over our Sunday school for the following Sunday getting ready to delve into that Word of God that is beneficial to all that are in attendance, our children, our young people, and everyone that's present. And you're invited to come and be a part of our worship service. We study the Bible because if the Bible said it, we can believe it, but if it didn't say it, we don't have to believe it. Know the Word. It is the Word of God that sets us free. This is the hour of power. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. And I have a word from the Lord for you right now. Daniel 1 and 8. Look at it with me if you uh, have your Bibles. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You're invited on Wednesday night to worship with us the pastor Nathaniel Lee of the Real Church of God in Christ out on Indian Church Road is going to be there with his congregation at his singing ministry. Let me tell you, Pastor Lee is one great preacher, and if you want to hear a great word, be there on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. when the Berea Church family will fellowship with the Holy Temple Church. There's probably no adult that hasn't heard the story of Daniel in the Bible, and let me just give to you a word for your life this morning. It's time for a change in your life. That's right, some folk think they're all right, but it's time for a change. We're approaching the end time. The book of Timothy tells us, and I believe it was Paul who said, in the last days, perilous times would come. And uh, those times are now dangerous times. We're seeing them now. When you uh, turn on your television, you see one incident after another. I'm talking about dangerous incident, terrorism, and uh, killings and drive-by shootings, all kinds of uh, disasters taking place in our world, and not just here in Buffalo, but worldwide. And it's time for a change in our life. Look, it would seem as if these things that are happening would bring about a change in your life. Daniel was still young when this world came crushing in around him. 
However, in his parents' time, the kingdom had seen its last great ruler. But in an instant, the king had been killed at the height of his power and greatness. And now a succession of less than stellar kings had brought the land down low. Crime was up, security was down, and it was impossible to know whom you could trust. Chaos had set in and disorder reigned. The prophets begged and pleaded for the land to return to God. But no one would listen. That reminds me of now. It seems as if people are not listening. We preach the Bible. We tell them about the Word of God and, and what it says about these times, the fulfillment of God's Word and what the last days would be like. But it doesn't seem as if anyone is listening. And over the river was the biggest fear of all, Babylon. The Bible said that Daniel was only a youth, so that, so that could have meant he was as young as maybe 10 years old or 11. And yet the world that he grew up in was not for children. The atmosphere of the time was fear. And some of the things that brought about fear that underlines this book of Daniel are some of the uncertainties that lies all around us today. On a political level, we have largely chosen to define ourselves by our fear of terrorism. On a national level, what is it that we as a country really believe in and hold on to? But watching the news can be an exercise in wading through the sewers of mankind's depravity to his fellow man. I just mentioned shootings and killings and power struggles are on the rise. Not only that, but marriages are falling apart all around us. Therefore, the family is no longer a unit. Families are in pieces. Work is more about the paycheck than a sense of accomplishment. And some have to do things on their jobs they don't want to do just to get a check. Daniel's world was ripped apart and turned into something totally foreign to him, but yet he resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and wine. So he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself. The Bible says that the king ordered the best and the brightest kids to be taken away from their parents and shipped hundreds of miles away to Babylon. I just want you to look at what's happening to Daniel here. His temple has been destroyed and looted. His home has been taken away from him and now they want to teach him completely new ways of eating and thinking and being. They even want to take away his name. Daniel was facing some unholy consequences, fear, uncertainty, and even doubt. And yet in the midst of this, Daniel was able to overcome and prosper. Well, what's the secret, Pastor? What is it that gave him the strength to carry on? Very simply this, he had learned to lean upon God. He had learned to see that even in the midst of constant change, he would rely on the God who never changes. Oh yes, if Daniel knew the simple truth that God doesn't change, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then it wasn't that difficult to realize that his behavior didn't need to change either. He would stay true to the God who he has always been true to. This is not to say that it was always easy to hold on. Circumstances are constantly changing and how we live our life in Christ. I want you to know that's a powerful thing. God may not change, but everything else changes. His purposes and his plans are an intricate tapestry that brings peace 
I read a story about a company that put out, put out an instant cake mix that was a big flop. <laughs> and the instructions said all you had to do was add water and bake the cake. The company couldn't understand why the cake didn't sell until their research discovered that the public felt uneasy about a cake mix that required only water. Apparently, people thought it was too easy. So the company altered the formula and changed the directions to add an egg in addition to the water. The idea worked, and guess what? The cake mix sold rapidly. And that story reminds me of how people react to the plan, yes, of salvation. To some, it sounds too easy and simple to be true, even though the Bible says, in Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are ye saved, and not let not of yourself, this is not your own doing. In other words, it is the gift of God, not the results from work. Un unlike the cake mix factory, God has not changed his gospel. Amen. He has not changed his formula. God has not changed anything when it comes to salvation, to make it more marketable. The gospel that we proclaim has nothing to do with being good enough. That's the plan that God has for us. But Jesus told Nicodemus, the words that I have become known as the gospel in a nutshell. Uh -huh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but would have everlasting life. We have the opportunity to make that change. I want to finish this word of God, and I want you to meet me in the house of the Lord. That's Holy Temple, 572 Clinton Street this morning at 11 o'clock. I will be preaching. I feel the anointing. I feel the power of God. Come on and hear what the Lord has to say to you. And until this time next Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you real good. You come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. You and you. And